to another broadcast of You Already Know. Today we're going to be talking about peace, finality, and time travel. So, one of the adages that, I don't even know if that's the right word, that gave me solace while I was going through things. Good morning everybody, come on in. Hey! Oh hey! Love you. Uh, while I was going through it, was like, everything works out. It'll be okay in the end. And I clung on to that boat like it was the last one there'd ever be. And honestly, that probably made a difference. I'm not sure I had much else to hold on to. There could have been other choices. Um, I guess like Oh, yeah, the one that I'm going to give you now. <laughs> the one that you can do something with. Uh, uh, the path. So, in unpacking the idea of everything will be okay and it'll work out, you might find, as I did, that it doesn't. At least by some terms and from some perspectives, one of the bigger recent examples of that is one of my dear friends and clients, Richard McPeak, who was a fucking unicorn of a man, good God, had cancer and he didn't make it. He passed last summer and we worked together for some time and the miracle that we were able to offer him was a level of openness to the life that he did have while he continued to have it. And so there's a very obvious example of like, well, it wasn't okay in the end, you know, from certain vantage points. You can always argue for, and I did a video of this earlier in the series, kind of like these different levels. So from one level, of course, everything is always okay. And the loss of him folded into perhaps like the growth of others that will then benefit earth in a way that he was but on a grander scale so okay on one level but on other levels quite painful and not that comfortable for his beautiful beautiful family for myself along my journey there had been things that were lost that couldn't be regained um and some of the things that i wrote i think i did, wrote this last year i found that i shared that i found that for some time I kind of thought that in my journeys through time and space I'd be able to find my sister she died that's crazy but in the background it was almost like okay I was in denial of the reality there are there are certain relationships opportunities things that will end that you can't get back things that oh hey now that's the right moment we're talking about today hey everybody welcome today we're talking about peace finalities and time travel and what i've said thus far is like yo maybe you're like me you clung to idea the idea that everything will be okay in the end and everything oh yeah yeah and she did everything will be okay in the end and sometimes it's not (laughs) from certain vantage points and that means that like some opportunities go by and they never come back certain relationships end and they can't be retrieved and yet that doesn't have to be the end of your story um and so this broadcast is kind of like how to allow that that is and those things can't be revived And that's okay. And it might be very painful, but it's okay. So what I'm going to teach you today in a mindfulness tool is here and now. And so this would be your destination. And it's in a heart because that's where we're going. The destination of feeling. That means being present to your personal experience. That means what's here for right now. Thank you, everybody. Hi. Um, And so this would be the peace component of the topic today. And the finality is what I've kind of already gone over where it's like, look, sometimes you have to accept that you're not going to be able to talk to that person again. 
that door is not gonna open again. That blah, 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 blah. It ain't there. And that's okay. Allowing yourself to accept and open to what you might think of as a loss or the wrong thing looks like dropping out of your mind where you're likely frantically scrambling to explain or understand or make up for or come to and just feeling the loss or feeling the change. When you give yourself over to your feelings, it seems like things happen, very magical things. <laughs> and I'm not sure really how to say that in a more scientific way, except for that, just try it and see what happens. Actually, my client friend that I referenced earlier in the video, and if you're just joining, I talked about um, a very dear friend and client of mine who uh, died after a long battle with can cancer. and. Prior to that, he had lost his son of suicide, and this is all very public information. He's very openly shared his journey in hopes of motivating others, and then, like, fuck, he did. He really did. Like, what an angel. Even on earth. And anyhow, in processing the loss of his son, we worked together um, on that, and he followed the guidance that I just suggested. And always, first and foremost, good Lord, check in with yourself. Ask yourself for your own ideas before you're sourcing externally. And when somebody gives you an idea, hold it with you and say, like, is this right for me? And you might feel yes or no. And then another question might be is, is this right for me right now? Like, only you are going to know. Nobody is your expert, like you are your expert. And that sensation of being able to trust yourself is part of the destination. That's what allows you peace and that you know that you've got you. So anyhow, he allowed himself to like, I think it, he said it was like a weekend of just like wild emotion and pain and the storm broke and he emerged after that weekend with um, a feeling of you know, greater lightness and expansiveness and just being able to hold and be with that experience more. Hey girl, love you. Um, today we're talking about peace, finalities, and time travel. And so from the finality standpoint, what we're speaking to or I'm speaking to is kind of like, look, some things like they just are done. They're done. The person's gone, the thing is over, etc. I'm like, that's okay. And it likely comes with an emotional experience and try as you might, you won't be able to escape it. I promise you, the shit you avoid will chase you. It won't sound or look like the thing, but you won't be able to run from it. And in allowing yourself and trusting yourself really to be with the emotional experience, coming back to right now, just how you feel. Like right now, take a moment, you're so inspired. I don't like to be bossy, but. You know, I really want people to make their own choices. Like come in if you're so inspired and feel how you feel right now. Are your muscles tense? Does your energy feel heavy? Does it feel light? Is it moving? Are you inspired? Are you constricted? Are you moving quickly? Are you stagnant? Like just feel how you feel. And without trying to change it or explain it or understand it or compare it, just allow yourself to feel it. So much of what we do in our heads and in our frantic non-productive action is to avoid that feeling. But I promise, from my experience, from what I've seen in clients, it won't persist if you allow yourself to really relax into it and surrender to it. So the time travel component, this came to me the other day and I did it and it seemed helpful. And so I'm going to share it, but you do you. So what I did was I was walking to visit one of my artists at his gallery and it occurred to me to travel back in time and speak to like younger Shaylee. It feels like I might cry. <laughs> so if that starts to happen, like maybe I'll steer another direction, but I went and kind of like from different views like I took you know the persona of my dad of my mom of life of these different things of my older self and I talked to her and I was like hey this is what's gonna happen you know you're gonna experience this I'm gonna do this to you 
this is this, like this is what I really mean. And I kind of like sat down and brought all of the information to the future to this little girl and almost like a, it's gonna be okay, like relax. Like these all, all these things will blah, blah, blah. And like I was saying earlier, you know, okay might be by different terms than you initially are asking. Not everything works out the way you think it should, but that doesn't have to be the end. And oh my God, this is why I love literature. So, well, this is an interesting component I've been talking about for some time, but I think everybody knows because I say every 15 minutes that I love Marvel and children's literature, but with children's literature, I've been reading the classics and I came upon actually from one of my favorite booksellers in the city. I love so many of them deeply, but this one um, is set up at the French market. His name is Winston. He recommended Kate D. Camillo to me. She is a contemporary, that means living and working writer right now. I have read every chapter book like this she has out. It is young adults fiction. I sob my fucking head off every time. They are such beautiful, deep stories. And she writes like a boss. How everything she puts out is so good. I will never know. And it's not the same world. Sometimes she has animals that speak. Sometimes she doesn't. Sometimes like there, there's this incredible imagination that's, you know, I could fangirl all the time, but my point is in her stories and why I think they touch me so deeply is that there is generally a set of circumstances that the main characters are working with that will never go away. <laughs> They'll never change. The parents won't come back. The, you know, the lies won't have been told. The, you know, the journey can't be undone. Like there's something that the character goes through that they'll never be able to change. And I think that like, through the story, you can come to like feel it when it doesn't have to be about you, which can be very scary. This can be incredibly scary to do, to come and be still with your feelings because you don't know what will happen. And also, if they felt good, you probably would have started there. But having a story, something external for you to place, like a, it's almost like a loom where you can weave sort of like your own emotions out, kind of like work out all the things inside of you can be so helpful. And that's this book, The Uses of Enchantment, The Meaning and Importance of Fairy Tales. This is, as you can tell, an older thing, but the idea, um, it's this child psychologist and he talks about how, written in 1975, he talks about how um, fairy tales can create templates for children to allow their emotional experience and kind of work out these different ideas they might otherwise have been told to suppress. And I guess I bring all of this out. And if you are, if you're just joining today, we're talking about peace, um, finalities and time travel with the time travel. It's almost like you get to give yourself a story to kind of like you're removed from it in a little way that you can see kind of the narrative move. You can see the emotions go and in that you might find strength or the ground or beyond it. It's not you anymore from the standpoint of like, you see it, you're removed. And it's a template that then you can it, like maybe touch some of the things that you were afraid to touch before. One of the things that I'm coming to accept is that the kind of like intensity of my experience is not universal and that this might not make sense to everybody and that's okay. If you feel like there's something in here that might resonate or pertain to what you're going through and you're not sure how to apply the idea, oh good golly, put a, put a little note, put a comment, send me a message and I will do the best I can to respond. Um, okay, so peace comes to allowing that what was, was, and regardless of whether or not it will, that particular thing will be okay, you can be okay and you can be okay here right now, allowing yourself to relax <clears throat> into your experience, surrendering the need to try to explain it or understand it. <clears throat> Sorry, with the storytelling, what can be, okay, hold on one sec. With the storytelling, what can be a challenge is you might take and I guess that's why I brought it up. You might take 
what you've been trained to see as like, oh my God, okay, let's start with Infinity Wars. If you've ever seen that, if uh, it's a Avenger movie. Most of the superhero movies end <laughs> with the good guys getting it. Like evil has been abolished. We ride. And that's not where that one ended. I was devastated. And thank God I didn't see it in the theaters and I could watch the next one the next day, but our minds often want resolution to things similarly. That's the storyline we've been taught. You know, you get separated from your lover, you go on your journeys, you reconnect and it's okay. That's an archetype, that's a story. It doesn't have to play out with those particular players. You can take the idea further. The person that won't be around, the opportunity that's not around, what is the essence of it? Is it love? Is it um, creative expression? Is it professional development? Like allow the vehicle, honor with reverence, the original vehicle and allow yourself still to say like, okay, well, what is this? Where does the story really go so that you can allow yourself to put down resolution for something that can't be? The only resolution you have right now is here and now, and it's letting whatever was be what was, and also what will be will be. Okay, let's breathe. Does anyone have any questions that's out there right now? This was a heavy one. <laughs> If you're watching on Instagram, please subscribe on YouTube. I really, really, really get excited when I have new subscribers. It's at, <clears throat> sorry, Shaylee Edwards. If you're watching on YouTube, I film these live on Instagram, Shaylee underscore underscore Edwards. I work with clients one-to-one. -one. I just posted some reviews from that today. I've been doing it for 10 years and really have, oh, it's progressed, the offering. Um, and so this particular expression has been in motion since 2016, where I'm working with just kind of like where I'm working toward the mental and emotional aspects and then all spiritual and, then, uh, 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 and here we are. If you have any questions about what that process, process might look like for you and what we could do together, just ask. And I also am thrilled, absolutely thrilled to represent artists and bring their work to more people. I'm continuing to build that out ever so slowly. And if you are looking for art for your home or to gift or mark a milestone, please let me know. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your support. <clears throat> um, if you're interested in art, please let me know. Um, I've also got some guys I can connect you with who do incredible murals and they're just cool, cool people in general. So thank you so much for coming out today. Everyone have a beautiful afternoon, evening, day. Let us find you.